Hi everyone. Today let us discuss physiology of sleep and electroencephalogram. Let us discuss the topic under the following headings: electrical activity of the brain, evoked cortical potential, electroencephalogram, wakefulness, sleep, and then the applied physiology. Electrical activity of the brain, evoked cortical potential refers to the surface electrical activity which is recorded from the surface of the scalp in response to a specific and adequate stimulus these stimulus can be auditory visual or somatosensory stimulus and they produce two types of electrical activity in the cerebral cortex the, the first one is the primary evoke potential and the second one is diffuse secondary response primary evoke potential this is the initial brief and localized response for the specific sensory cortex it is characterized by the latency of about 5 to 12 milliseconds first there appears a surface positive wave and then followed by a negative wave primary evoked potential is highly specific which can be observed only where the pathway from a particular sensory organ ends diffuse secondary response is characterized by the latency of about 20 to 80 milliseconds positive negative wave sequence is larger and more prolonged than the primary evoked potential diffuse secondary response is not highly localized it can be recorded at the same time from most part of the cerebral cortex types of evoked potentials depending on the type of stimulus the evoked potential can be visual evoked potential brain stem auditory evoked potential and somatosensory evoked potential depending on the latency of the response evoked potentials can be classified into stimulus related potentials it can be short mid and long latency and then event related evoke potentials clinical uses of evoke potentials stimulus related evoke potentials reflects the functional integrity of the sensory pathways from the receptor to the cortex so any defect shown by delayed peak or interpeak latencies if there is any lesion that obstructs the sensory pathways in the patients can be identified which has great diagnostic value for example if there is an optic neuritis due to multiple sclerosis which is an demyelinating disorder can be identified here the next one is event related evoke potentials they are related to the cognitive behavior the these potential in the clinical helps in the clinical assessment of dementia in delirium it is very well established now electroencephalogram discovered by the german psychiatrist hans berger so the rhythms produced by the electroencephalogram is also called as berger's rhythm this was the machine which was initially used by the hans berger to record the eeg waves electroencephalogram refers to the record of spontaneous electrical activity of the brain 
taken from the surface of the scalp. Normal EEG waves are classified according to their voltage and frequency. Source is the discharging cell bodies of the cortical gray matter in the superficial layers due to the graded or summated postsynaptic potentials. So these potentials are due to current flow in the fluctuating dipoles of the dendrites. The electrical activity of the brain can also be recorded from the pile surface of the cortex after opening the skull, which is called as electrocarticogram. Electroencephalogram consists of waves which are oscillatory. These oscillations differ in the frequency and amplitude at different points on the scalp and during different stages of mental alertness. Frequency of the brain waves ranges from one cycle to over 50 cycles per second. Amplitude may vary from 50 to 200 microvolt. So most of the time these waves are irregular and doesn't have general pattern but at times they do have distinct pattern. So different waves recorded in a normal person depending on their frequency. So they are classified as alpha, beta, theta and delta waves. Alpha waves are the most prominent component of the EEG from the individuals who are awake but quiet and at rest with eyes closed. They are obtained from the spontaneous activity of non-specific thalamocatical system. The characteristic features of the alpha waves are they have the frequency of 8 to 13 hertz they have the amplitude of 50 microvolt so the location is in the pareto occipital region of the scalp they disappear during the sleep alpha block normally when the patient is awake and eyes closed we get alpha waves so if any form of sensory stimulation is given such as opening the eyes or if there is any uh, mental concentration thinking arousal so it will replace these regular alpha waves so with fast high frequency irregular low amplitude activity so that is called as the alpha block here you can see when the eyes are open its frequency gets decreased by hypoglycemia, hypothermia and sleep. Beta waves, they have the highest frequencies. It is usually between 14 to 30 cycles per second. Amplitude is much lower than the alpha waves which is 5 to 10 microvolt. They are recorded from the parietal end, the frontal area. It is seen in tension and when the central nervous system is activated, so arousal response and infants have fast beta-like activity and the barbiturates, they induce the beta activity typically at a frequency of 18 to 24 hertz theta waves has a frequency between 4 and 7 hertz amplitude is 10 microvolt which is slightly larger than the alpha waves 
they are recorded from the temporal and parietal region in the children usually they do not occur in normal waking individual except in the newborn infants they are seen in the following conditions so the emotional stress in adults particularly doing any disappointment and frustration and in many brain disorders and the theta component of the eeg often increases during crying in the children delta wave have the frequency less than 4 hertz they have the amplitude which is very high there is 20 to 200 microvolts delta waves can be produced by over breathing delta waves occur strictly in the cortex so not dependent of the activities in the lower regions of the brain so they are recorded during the sleep so when the cortex is released from the activating influence of the lower centers so the the location is strictly in the cortex delta waves they do not occur in normal waking individuals they are seen in deep sleep that is stage 3 and stage 4 of non rem sleep and in infancy and also seen in serious brain damage gamma wave is the latest eeg wave which has the fastest brain waves and has the highest frequency of more than 40 hertz which is associated with higher brain functions like cognition and memory when the people or in peak awareness intelligence and feelings of oneness neurophysiological basis of eeg cortical gray matter along with the thalamic and reticular connections are mainly responsible for rhythmic discharge of the cell bodies these connections plays an important role in the eeg current flow in the fluctuating dipoles formed by the cell bodies and the dendrites of the cortical cells they account for the potential changes that is recorded in the eeg so the dendrites are the main sites of non propagated depolarizing depolar- and the hyperpolarizing local potential changes the cell dendrites relationship is that of a constantly shifting dipoles hence they become the site of the current sink these dense dendritic trees is present in the vertical orientation so this results in the brain wave patterns so in the vertical orientation so in general the when the sum of the dendritic activity is positive relative to the cell the cell is hyperpolarized and less excitable when it is negative the cell is depolarized and hyper excitable the eeg is due to the graded potential which are summated post synaptic potentials in the brain neurons synchronizing mechanisms the rhythmic discharge from the thalamus and the synchronizing activity of the 
neighboring cells are responsible for the synchronizing mechanism. So the synchronizing, synchronizing activity of the neighboring cells is due to neural processes on each other and the interconnection of the neurons by the inhibitory pathways. Desynchronizing mechanism refers to the replacement of the rhythmic EEG pattern with the irregular low voltage activity, which we have earlier seen in alpha block, which is an arousal reaction. This occurs due to the sensory stimulation of the reticular activating system. The EEG waveforms at rest in humans varies with the age. In infants up to one year of age, the occipital rhythm is slow than the adults. In children, the occipital rhythm speeds up and the adult alpha pattern gradually appears during the adolescence. After 15 years of age, the EEG waveforms become almost the same as that of the adult. Uses of the EEG in case of cerebral hematoma and fluid collections over the cortical region, the EEG activity decreases. When there is a lesion over the cortex or organic brain damage, no EEG wave is generated from that part, but slow and irregular waves are generated from the surrounding areas. Epilepsy shows high voltage waves due to the discharge of the cerebral neurons. So it can be idiopathic abnormal waves such as spike, uh, sharp waves or slow wave complex. Consciousness dysfunction so there appears slow wave. It is also useful in studying the sleep pattern. It is also useful in finding the effect of various drugs on the brain activity. So to find out the brain death, to confirm the cases, whether the brain activity is present or not, so before uh, the individual declared death, when the brain cells stop activity, so the EEG waves, they become flat. So finally, they disappear all the EEG waves. So to confirm the brain death, they do EEG. Wakefulness, the reticular activity system of the reticular formation is the neural substrate of the consciousness and the sleep phase cycle. The reticular activating system is a complex polysynaptic pathway that projects diffusely from the brainstem reticular formation area to the cerebral cortex. So it can be directly coming or through the thalamus. Neural substrate for wakefulness. The wakefulness and the consciousness are maintained by a continuous sensory input to the cortex, mainly from the projections of the reticular activating systems and also from the non specific thalamic system, subthalamus, hypothalamus, and basal forebrain. To start with the reticular activating system, it is mainly responsible for the tonic maintenance of the cortical activation and behavioral arousal of the wakefulness. Thalamus, the non-specific thalamic nuclei which are there are involved in the activation of the entire cerebral cortex. These nuclei get the tonic drive from the reticular formation and in turn they project 
diffusely to the cerebral cortex. Hypothalamus and subthalamus, ascending impulses from the midbrain reticular formation also relate to the cerebral cortex through the posterior hypothalamus and subthalamus. This posterior hypothalamus acts as a waking center. So the stimulation of the posterior hypothalamus causes wakefulness. Basal forebrain receives impulses from the reticular formation and in turn they project to the cerebral cortex which is responsible for the cortical activation and the wakefulness. Chemical mediators of wakefulness include neurotransmitters, CSF1 peptides and blood bond peptides. Neurotransmitters, the catecholamines, the norepinephrine neurons which project diffusely to the forebrain including the cortex play an integral role in the cortical activating system. So there are the L-dopa so which is a uh, precursor of the dopamine, reserpin there is a drug which depletes the catecholamines in the nerve terminals which induce the drowsiness amphetamine which is an typical mimetic amine which produces intense arousal and uh, cortical activation acetylcholine so the role of the cholinergic neurons is the cortical activation and the wakefulness which is promoted by the cholinergic agonist and the anticholinesterases that is the neostigmine. Histamine, the histamine containing neurons are located in the posterior hypothalamus. Arousing effect is produced by an intraventricular administration of the histamine. Sedative effect is produced by the antihistaminic drugs. Glutamate, glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter which is released from the cerebral cortex in highest quantities during the cortical activation of the spontaneous waking or also induced by the stimulation of the midbrain reticular formation. Cerebrospinal fluid bond peptides it is presumed that wakefulness promoting factors are present in the CSF. So some of them are the substance P, hypothalamic releasing factors and vasoactive intestinal peptides. Blood bond peptides act as wakefulness promoting factors. So epinephrine and histamine, they do not cross the blood-brain barrier, but they can act on the circumventricular organs that which lie outside the blood-brain barrier and they mediate the mediate the cortical arousal. And the glucocorticoids they they readily cross the blood-brain barrier and act directly on the neurons and they enhance the arousal during the stress. These are the blood bond peptides. Sleep. How do we define sleep? It is a state of unconsciousness from which a subject can be aroused by an appropriate stimuli. During the sleep process, an individual is not aware of the environment and he will not perform any activity as it requires the consciousness. During sleep, the stimulus pulse transfer becomes very less frequent between the reticular formation and the cerebral cortex. So it is not only the unconsciousness, it uh, the subject has to be 
are roused by an appropriate stimuli. If that cannot be done, if he cannot be aroused, then that is called as coma. Coma is a state of unconsciousness from which a subject cannot be aroused. The sleep drive, it differs from individual to individual. Some individual need more and some less, so, which is typically 8 hours per day. So there are non-somniacs, they sleep far less than the most, but still they do not feel tired during the daytime. Insomniacs, they have a, la a normal desire for sleep, but they are unable to sleep and they feel tired during the day. Sleep and wakefulness, like many of our bodies' regulatory mechanisms, sleep wake cycle also has the circadian rhythm of about 24 hours. So, circadian rhythm for the sleep differs for the newborn and the adult. So the newborn infant has many cycle of sleep and wakefulness in the 24 hours. But after two years of age, uh, there will be only single sleep wake cycle in normal adult. So this cycle consists of 7 to 8 hours of sleep and 16 to 17 hours of wakefulness. Sleep wake cycle like other circadian rhythm it is endogenous. So the biological clock controlling the whole circadian rhythm is the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the anterior hypothalamus. The circadian rhythms are endogenous and they can persist even without the environmental clues. But under normal circumstances, the rhythms, the circadian rhythm is modified by the external timing cues that is called as Zyke birth. They adapt the rhythm to the environment. Sunlight is a powerful timing cue. So the light entrains this rhythm by means of retino hypothalamic tract. Though the suprachiasmatic nucleus regulates the timing of the sleep, it is not responsible for the sleep itself. There are other factors that is involved in the sleep. Factors affecting the sleep. Sleep time remains fairly stable from day to day even under widely varying condition and is only modestly affected by variation in the activity and the sensory stimulation. Factors which minimize that sensory stimulation and favors the onset of natural sleep or the darkened room, comfortable surrounding temperature, silence, physical and the mental relaxation, conception of a basic surge, basic urge like uh, hunger and low frequency stimulation such as knocking in a cradle, sitting in a moving vehicle, watching a movie for some. Types of sleep. Sleep is of two types. First one is non-REM sleep or non-rapid eye movement sleep. It is also called as slow wave sleep because in this type of sleep, brain waves are very slow. Uh, next one is rapid eye movement sleep. Or it is also called as paradoxical sleep, fast wave sleep, desynchronizing sleep, these two types of sleep comes alternatively in a sleep cycle. 
stages of sleep there are five stages of sleep we will see that later stages and easy patterns of non rem sleep stage of wakefulness the state of wakefulness and consciousness results due to the stimulatory impulses from the reticular activating system to the cerebral cortex the eeg pattern during the wakefulness is uh, asynchronous and low amplitude brain waves that is called as beta waves stage of quiet awake resting stage with eyes closed so here the state of quiet awake uh, rest with eyes closed it is the period in between the stage of wakefulness and the stage of sleep here the eeg pattern is characterized by highly synchronized alpha waves stage of non rem sleep when an individual from the state of quiet rest with eyes closed enter the state of non rem sleep the consciousness is reduced progressively in an orderly way from light sleep to deep sleep in four stages stage 1 of non rem sleep is also called as stage of very light sleep here the eeg pattern is characterized by low amplitude mixed frequency activity still a mild to moderate stimuli or often unable to produce a full arousal stage 2 also called a stage of light sleep here uh, there will be appearance of sleep spindles there will be burst of alpha like 10 to 14 hertz of 50 micro volt waves here which it periodically interrupts the alpha rhythm k complex they occur spontaneously during this stage this k complex they consist of one or two high voltage waves followed by a brief 14 hertz activity so in stage 2 sleep spindle and k complex plays an important role moving on to stage 3 or stage of moderate deep sleep eeg is characterized by display of high amplitude slow waves called delta waves stage 4 it is a stage of deep sleep here the eeg pattern has dome like very slow large wave which is the delta wave the characteristic of the deep sleep is a pattern of rhythmic slow waves indicating marked desynchronization and this all these four stages continues alternatively with the rem sleep so let us discuss the rem sleep separately later physiological changes during non rem sleep muscle tone decreases progressively heart rate and blood pressure decreases respiratory rate decreases eyes begin slow rolling movement until they finally stop in stage 4 that is deep sleep stage with eyes turned up upward body metabolism is slower pituitary shows pulsatile release of growth hormone and gonadotropin hormone behavioral changes during non rem sleep progressive reduction will be there in the consciousness and increasing resistance to awaken it is more difficult to 
wake up a person from stage three and stage four, then from stage one and stage two. When awaken, don't they do not report the dreaming. There is some response to meaningful stimuli even in sleep, which which indicates that sensory processing continues at some level after the onset of the sleep. This is apparent from the discriminate responses during sleep to meaningful versus non-meaningful stimuli. Intellectual functions during non-REM sleep. Thoughts become illogical and incoherent towards the onset of the sleep. Retrograde amnesia occurs during transition from wakefulness to sleep. This is because sleep inactivates the consolidation of short term into long term memory. So, the inability to there will be inability, there will be inability to grasp the instant of sleep onset in memory. So, even not remembering the ringing of alarm. REM sleep that is rapid eye movement sleep it is also called as fast wave sleep paradoxical sleep deeper sleep dream sleep it is also called as desynchronized sleep eeg pattern of the rem sleep it is characterized by a high frequency and low amplitude pattern that is the beta wave there will be some desynchronized pattern uh, that is seen in the waking state so the REM sleep is also called as fast wave sleep or desynchronized sleep the individual is clearly unresponsive to the external environment stimuli it is usually more difficult to awake in the REM sleep than in the non-REM sleep. Because of the easy pattern of wakefulness, REM sleep is also called as paradoxical sleep. Okay, remember that it is not easy to wake up the individuals in the REM sleep. Because of the easy pattern which is like uh, the wakefulness pattern it is also called as paradoxical pgo waves what is it so this wave ponto geniculo occipital wave it is recorded in the cats but in humans normally it is not detectable by the scalp it, we can record it by depth EEG, we can record the PGO waves. So, this wave originate in pons and passes on to the lateral geniculate body and then to the cerebral cord. That is why it is called as ponto geniculo occipital waves. These waves activate the reticular inhibiting area in the medulla that uh, produces the hypotonia. Behavioral changes during the REM sleep. As discussed in the previous slide, it is difficult to arouse an individual in the REM sleep as it is from deep sleep. But when awakened from the REM sleep, the individual immediately becomes alert and aware of the environment. So dreaming occurs here during the REM sleep. That is why it is also called as dream sleep. There is a recall from approximately 80% of the arousals from the REM sleep. So the individuals can recall the dream during the REM sleep. Physiological changes during the REM sleep. Rapid 
eye movements this is the hallmark of the rem sleep that is why it is called as rapid eye movement sleep there will be saccadic eye movements there will be small jerky movements that bring the eye from one fixation point to another fixation point heart rate and respirate respiration rate becomes irregular muscle tone is reduced because of the inhibition of spinal motor neurons here snoring happens during the sleep so snoring is because of the relaxed tongue so in supine position it happens and then twitching of the limb so this happens occasionally because the muscle tone is reduced already during the REM sleep the frequency and the intensity of the muscle twitching that will not produce any injury or it will neither not awaken the patient or the individual middle ear muscles are also active during the REM sleep penile erection in males and engorgement of the clitoris in females may occur impact thermoregulation sweating or shivering during the sleep in response to the ambient temperature it occurs in the non rem sleep but here in rem sleep it all ceases teeth grinding this may be seen in the children which is also called as bruxism sleep cycle and then normal individual the average sleep period is 7 to 8 hours so that is divided into five cycle during which so the rem and the non rem sleep they alternate with each other there is an orderly progression of sleep stage end of stages during a typical sleep cycle the average average duration of each cycle is about 90 minutes the duration of different sleep stages are different in different cycles so duration of the non rem sleep is about 85 to 90 minutes in the first cycle then it progressively decreases in the next successive sleep cycles about 25% of the entire sleep period is on the rem sleep duration of the rem sleep is about 5 minutes in first cycle and it progressively increases in the next cycle so non rem sleep decreases and rem sleep increases in further cycles usually the sleep cycle starts with the non rem sleep and moves on to the rem sleep but there are certain conditions in in adults the sleep starts with rem cycle that is during the jet lag chronic sleep deprivation narcolepsy acute withdrawal of rem suppressing drugs and also in case of any endogenous depressions variations in sleep duration so average sleep time per day differs according to the age during infancy it is 16 hours during childhood 10 hours during adulthood 7 to 8 hours during old age it will be lesser than the eight hours variations in time period of different stages of sleep effect of age prematurely born infants spend about 80% of their sleep time in rem sleep full term infants spend only 50% of their sleep time in rem sleep in adulthood reduction in total sleep time happens to 8 hours 
they spend two hours in REM sleep and six hours in non-REM sleep. The genesis of sleep. Sleep state does not result from a passive withdrawal of the arousal due to the fatigue of the reticular activating system. Now it is established that sleep is an active process which is different for non-REM sleep and the REM sleep. Let us first discuss about the genesis of non-REM sleep. It is generated by the interaction of neurons which are grouped as diencephalic medullary synchronizing zone and basal forebrain sleep zone. To start with the diencephalic sleep zone, it lies in the hypothalamus and the nearby intralaminar and anterior thalamic nuclei. A sleep facilitatory center is considered to be located in the anterior hypothalamus. In posterior hypothalamus, it acts as in waking center. So the diencephalic sleep zone must be stimulated at low frequency to produce the sleep. Medullary synchronizing zone, it is in the reticular formation of the medulla oblongata. Like diencephalic sleep zone, this zone also produces sleep when stimulated at low frequency. Basal forebrain sleep zone includes the preoptic area and the diagonal band of Broca. So this is different from the other two zones. The stimulation of this zones at low as well as high frequency produces the sleep. Activity of non-REM sleep on the cells. Mechanism of production of sleep spindles and slow waves of non-REM sleep. The non-REM sleep is characterized by the ECG spindles and the slow waves that are produced by the synchronized postsynaptic potentials in the cortical neurons. These synchronized synaptic potentials are generated by rhythmic firing of the thalamic related neurons that project to the cortex. The rhythmic firing of the relay neurons is a result of action of GABAergic inhibitory neurons in the nucleus reticularis that forms a shell around the thalamus. Genesis of REM sleep, role of cholinergic neurons of midbrain and the adjacent dorsal pons. These cells form an important component of the midbrain arousal system and are maximally active during waking and the REM sleep. Their activity contributes to the blocking of the slow waves of the EEG. The role of nucleus reticularis pontus oralis, also called as nucleus NPO. So three classes of neurons are there in the RPO that is nucleus reticularis pontus oralis. The first one is the cholinergic PGO on cells. The discharge of these neurons produce produces the so-called PGO spikes which is the characteristic feature of the REM sleep. REM waking on cells, burst firing of the REM waking on cells during REM sleep produces the rapid eye movements and also the muscle twitches. REM on cells, REM on cells of the nucleus reticularis pontus oralis, they show high level of activity during the REM sleep, but they have a very little or no activity during waking and non-REM sleep. Chemical mediators of sleep. Neurotransmitters employed by the neurons forming the neural substrate of sleep that include the serotonin, acetylcholine and noradrenaline. The substances that have been identified by the experiment on sleep deprived animals 
are called as the sleep producing substances they are the muramel dipeptide which is found in the bacterial cell wall interleukin 1 which is a cytokine that we mediate the effects of the muramel dipeptides adenosine delta sleep producing sleep inducing peptide this is uh, isolated from the blood of sleeping rabbits prostaglandin d2 and arginine vasotoxin physiological significance of sleep sleep may serve as a period of body's rest and also metabolic restoration there are some physiological changes that happens during the non rem sleep that is the pulsatile release of growth hormone and also the gonadotropins from the pituitary and there is a decrease in blood pressure heart rate and respiration sleep is necessary for certain forms of learning so in the experimental animals learning sessions they do not improve the performance until a period of small wave sleep or small wave sleep plus the rem sleep happens and then sleep rem sleep is necessary for the mental well being the correlation between dreaming and the rem sleep indicates that brain is highly active at this time so this may allow for the expression thorough dreams in the subconscious and for long term chemical and structural changes that brain must undergo to learn and also to make the memory possible rem sleep plays an important role in the homeostatic mechanism so it is evident from the observation that when the experimental animals are completely deprived of rem sleep for longer periods they lose weight in spite of increased caloric intake and then finally they die sleep disorders insomnia it refers to to an inability to have sufficient or restful sleep despite an adequate opportunity for sleep fatal familial insomnia it is a serious disorder characterized by worsening insomnia impaired autonomic and motor functions dementia and eventually death it is a progressive disease that can happen to anybody narcolepsy it refers to an irresistible urge to sleep so in adults the sleep onset occurs with non rem sleep which is followed by rem sleep however in narcolepsy the rem sleep is entered directly from the waking state so the narcolepsy it manifests as uh, the episode of sudden sleep it can um, make the individual to go to sleep while performing the data so cataplexy so in some narcoleptics the profound reduction in the muscle tone which is characteristic of the rem sleep can occur even without the loss of consciousness so during such an attack which is called as cataplexy the individual suddenly becomes paralyzed he falls on the ground and will not be able to move so dream like state during the wakefulness is another mode of manifestation of narcolepsy so narcoleptics they describe it as an hallucination there are some sleep disorders associated with non rem sleep which is also called as slow wave sleep or more uh, specifically occurring during arousal from slow wave sleep that is sleep walking which is also called as somnambulism episodes of sleep walking are more common in children than in adults and occur pro- predominantly in males these episodes may last for several minutes such 
individuals they walk with their eyes open even they avoid the obstacle but when awakened uh, they cannot recall the episode then bed wetting which is also called as nocturnal enuresis involuntary voiding of urine this occurs in some children during slow wave sleep then nightmares so during a nightmare that occurs in slow wave sleep an individual wakes up and screaming and uh, appears terrified over no reason for acute anxiety is recalled by contrast so terrifying dreams that occur during REM sleep or graphically they remember it then uh, REM behavior disorder it is a newly recognized condition in which REM sleep is not associated with the inhibition of the muscle tone so such person they act out their dreams so they they thrash about they even jump out of the bed they they behave aggressively so the generalized or localized muscle contraction associated with their uh, visual imaginary things so there will be an imagined aggression in this books to read hindu qurana genang jk paul and gaitan hall thank you